we pray for those who are here already that you begin with us and that um, everything that will be deliberated on this evening will be to the glory of your name. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a prayer we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Why don't you greet somebody? Tell them that you love them. Lift your hands together and praise the Lord. Why don't you greet another person? Tell them that you love them. Lift your hands together and praise the Lord. Why don't you greet another person? I love you. Lift your hands together and praise.
Come and take control of our lives. Come and take control of our, this meeting, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Even this evening, we lift up your name on high. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor because you are our God and our Savior. You love all of us. You love each and every soul in this place, my God. You, you, you love us so much, my God. You gave your life for us. We return all the praise, glory, and honor back to you, Jesus. We return all the praise to you. We want to honor you this evening. We want to honor you, Lord, my God. We want to honor you in this meeting. Go back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Welcome, welcome, doctors and dentists. This is where we all belong. Amen. This is our dinner. We are here and we know that it shall be well. I want everyone to be smiling, like my friend Budia, who, who is smiling throughout. And before we, we proceed, I want to share with you an interesting story which I heard from somewhere. And I hope that you didn't listen so that you listened here today. A story is told about a country and uh, there was a lot of famine. You know, like in Kenya, a nation that is known of extreme ends. Hunger, a lot of it, famine. And guys were dying. And so the government, not this, this coalition government, that their government decided to, to mitigate the crisis by funding the families by giving them money. And the procedure was that if you have four kids, you'll be given 10,000, and if you have five, you are, it is well with you working. I'm not talking about the family in Tintin restaurant. It will be quenched very soon. Amen? Now, there was this family, I'm told, and uh, they had four kids. And so they, they were just on the borderline. You know borderline? I know if you have gone to medical school, you know what I mean. Uh, they had four kids, so they were to be given 10,000. And so the man, who is supposed to be the head of the family, with all the wisdom he has, say now like me, with the, all the wisdom I have, and I have four kids and a wife, and I'll be given 10,000, and if I just add one more, I'll be given double that. So he thought and thought and thought and scratch his head, scratch his head, not like Dr. Gitonga because he would scratch his bald head and uh, <laughs> scratch nothing. Until he came up with a solution. And he, he said, he told the wife, uh, this I've never told you. And uh, back in the village, I had, uh, before we got married, I had like a son. Let me go for him. We'll not fight now. Let me go for him. <laughs> then when I come, at least you'll be given the other 10,000. Then you can fight. At least you even have money to go to the hospital if you injure me. And I think that was very wise. And so he left the foreign day to go get the, the other son. I like the way all of you are attending. Should we continue? Ah! So he went to the village and he looked for the son whose ears, the, gym, the cowboy whose ears looked like his, and the nose of course, depending on what measurement he had given. Then he came with the boy. And in the evening, uh, when he walked into the house, I wanted to imagine how he was feeling now he'll get 10,000 more, and there's a lot of hunger and everything. When he walked into the house, amazingly, Guess what happened? He had left four kids. He found two. So I was like, where are the rest? Where is, where is, let me, let me call them, come out and not tell you. Where is come out and not tell you? The right look at him and say, there are fathers came for them. <laughs> Think about that. And uh, as you think about that, I would want to invite uh, Professor Walter Jawako to give us some briefs about uh, CMDA, then I'll give you another one. We've had many activities, first of all to strengthen us as individuals in our work with the Lord, and then to sharpen our skills, uh, to be able to be of better service to the communities that we serve. 
but we became affiliated to the International Christian Medical and Dental Association, and one of the requirements was we, we then needed to line ourselves with the international organization. And to do that, we've had to review our constitution and even our name, and we have a new logo today. Our doctrine remains the same. We are focused on the scriptures. Our, the Bible remains the foundation for everything that we do. Um, and so nothing changes in terms of our core values, our mission statement, and our vision but our name has uh, to change, and it's more encompassing. Previously, when we referred to ourselves as Christian Medical Fellowship, some people almost felt uh, left out, but now we clearly stipulate it is an organization for the Christian doctors and uh, dentists. And then we also have associate membership. All the other uh, medical professions can join as members, but as associate members. So it's important that we just uh, clarify that today. So it's my privilege uh, to be able to witness uh, this launching or relaunching of the Christian Medical Fellowship and uh, a more encompassing them, the Christian Medical and Dentist Association of Kenya. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to clap for the chairman, CMDA. Wow. The first, the first chairman of CMDAK. I come to speak to you about the CMF Health Services Trust. As you can see, the CF, we still have, uh, it's still referred to as CMF because it was, uh, uh, it was formed about five years ago now. Um, the Christian Medical Fellowship, or the, CM, the Christian Medical and Dental Association, as we are now called, uh, was part of its function was to provide um, community services and to provide health services, particularly to the poor in our community. And for many years we uh, did community services, we did free health services and other services to the community. But about six years or seven years back, it was thought that we should formalize this and fo uh, so that we can be able to focus on services, utilizing the, uh, the talents that we have, using the knowledge that we have to serve our communities. We did not want to be an association that whose activities are mainly dinners like this one which only members and their friends come to and our communities out there do not develop. So the CMF at that time, now CMDA, decided to form uh, a number of uh, organizations, so you can say a number of divisions within it or a number of ministries which can help to address this, uh, these issues. The one which you know best is the pro-life uh, movement or the pro-life uh, 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 division of CMF, which has been very active as an advocacy group and now has actually also pro moved towards providing services and it does provide rescue homes. The first one that has been established is in Muranga and it's going, I think it has about close to six, or six to 10 girls that have been rescued and are, pro and are receiving services there. It's a service or it's a, a ministry that is in partnership with the local churches um, using a house that was donated by a benefactor. They, they also have another house, I think, in Mombasa, in Kilifi area, which has been donated. And once the one in Muranga is, is running, then they'll move to the one at the coast. But specifically, the CMF Health Services Trust was formed in order to provide health services, because that's really our key and our core and the area that we are knowledgeable in, to health services to poor communities, and also to be involved because health in itself alone is not just about health services. There are many other factors within the community which contribute to a healthy community. And so this, the, this, the, the first activity that it's involved in is in is in uh, establishing a medical center, and we have rented premises in Motela Estate. Motela Estate is along, just off Jogo Road, opposite uh, Uchumi Jogo Road, and the premises have been rented actually since March of this year. Uh, in May or late April, we had a prayer service to, in, that particular, uh, to, in that particular premises, a number of you came, 
and we are in the process of renovating it so that we can use it as a, as a medical center. It's a large premises. It will be able to provide outpatient services and x-ray and laboratory, as well as a dental clinic and some administrative offices. They, uh, I have, most of you have received this leaflet uh, explaining briefly what we would like to do. Because the premises was rather run down, and also because previously it was used as a bar, uh, we need to do a lot of refurbishment in order to, to bring it to a level that we can use it as a clinic. And uh, a considerable amount of money is required, but we have divided it into four phases. So that the first phase, which will be able to use half of the, the first floor or the ground floor, uh, to be able to use to start the outpatient services. The second phase would be the second part of the ground floor which will have the pharmacy as well as the laboratory. The third phase is on the first floor. It's a double story uh, block and all within the shopping center would have the dental clinic. And the fourth phase would be, uh, would utilize, would refurbish half of the first floor uh, which would then be used for administrative offices. Uh, we have given you uh, the estimates that are required, but the first phase requires about a million shillings in order to renovate, equip, and also provide money that we can run the service for about six months or so before it is able to, uh, to generate enough finances to, uh, to sustain itself. The first project, uh, I think I have summarized, but the first project was such that it would be a self-sustaining clinic. So it's a clinic that is in a poor area, but in an area where the residents or the people who use the services will be able to pay a small amount of money that will sustain that particular clinic. The second, uh, the second clinic that we hope that we shall do after this one will be in a very poor area where the services will be completely or almost completely subsidized hopefully from money generated from this, uh, this first health uh, medical center. So we, this is a project of the Christian Medical Fellowship, of the Christian Medical and Dental Association. And it's a faith project in that we started with zero money. Uh, but we have been able to uh, lease the property, pay whatever money that has been required, pay rent while we have been refurbishing the place, and also uh, raised some money that at the present time we have already started the, the, renovation, uh, the, the renovations in that particular clinic. We have also gotten a considerable amount of donations so far in terms of equipment. We have had donated three dental chairs. Uh, they are second hand but they are in good condition. One of them will be used in that medical center and two we shall use in future medical centers. We also have an assortment of, uh, of uh, dental equipment, uh, dental uh, yeah, equipment that will go together with the dental chairs. We've got um, uh, a sterilizer that can be used for the whole clinic as well as for the dental clinic. We have a we have had a donation of 20 computers, which we already have. Ten of them will be utilized within the center because we hope to to computerize completely so that it will be paperless. Uh, ten of those computers will be used at that center. Ten, the other ten computers, we have rented an adjacent property and we will establish um, a cyber cafe in order to raise finance for CMDA services. The premises has been rented and we are in the process of uh, uh, doing the, the furnishing so that we have tables, the computers are available. Uh, the room is available, and we we should be. This should be going by the by the beginning of next month. So um, there are also an assorted of medical equipment which have been donated uh, by various people, including some members who are here. And we urge all of you to join us in this faith journey, so that we can at least realize a, a situation where we shall be. We can say that there is a community to which we are contributing and providing medical services. And then we can go on to move to the next stages because this is only the beginning. We expect that there will be several of these medical centers run by CMDA uh, throughout the country, at least in all counties. So our pledge here is that one,
but we would like a number of you to, to, uh, to be involved in this. At the present time, we are only a handful who have given their time in planning and trying to look for resources. We would like more of you to be involved. Uh, secondly, we would like that as we shall, we expect that by October, that we shall be able to open this center for services. And we'll be as, whereas we plan to employ staff, we would also like you to volunteer your services so that you can come on a Saturday morning or a Wednesday morning and provide the medical services uh, that you are able to, to provide. We would also ask that you support the CMF Health Services Trust financially or CMDA financially so that we can proceed on with the renovations and start to, to provide services. Uh, if you have any donations which uh, you may forward this to the CMDA office and the details are uh, on, the, on the leaflet which you have got. We would also ask that you continuously pray for these centers, for the establishment for these centers. As we have told you, it's a faith venture. There is no capital available. There is no donor that's available. This belongs to you, and the resources we expect will come from you, and we believe that the Lord will provide, but we need to pray uh, about it. We would also like you to tell other colleagues about it, because we are a large number of members of CMDA. And as the, there is a, an advantage in having large numbers in that if every one of us in CMDA contributed even only 1,000 shillings, we would have a lot of, uh, we would have enough actually to, to complete the renovations. But of course, those who are able to provide the 1 million shillings, we would welcome that. The third way in which we would ask that, we would ask you that you can participate is that you can loan CMDA money. So if you have 20,000 shillings, 100,000 shillings, 1 million shillings, you can loan CMDA. Instead of, we actually are in the process of getting a bank loan. But we said if one of you could loan CMDA that money, in one year's time we'll be able to pay it back. That would help us and would save us from the very high interest that we are going to be charged by the bank. Because we do not have any security, it's going to be an unsecured loan we have to pay interest of almost 21% or 24%. That's very high. So if you are able to loan us at 10% interest, giving us, uh, and we have an agreement with you to pay, it would really help. And this has been done before. You, a number of you uh, may, uh, may not know, but in some of the uh, KMA projects, I think one of the second KMA housing projects, there was a time that uh, there was a shortage of money because money wasn't coming in fast enough. And the KMA members, some of them got together and said, the bank is delaying to loan us money. Uh, we, are, we, are, uh, we are delaying in our project. Why can't we ask our members who have money to deposit with us? When we get our loan, we are going to refund them. And indeed, they were able to convince a few members to deposit money with them in forms of a loan, and that was refunded later. They were able to proceed on with that particular project. So it is possible for us to enter into an agreement, CMDA to enter into an agreement, as such with some of you, if you have money that you don't need to use immediately, and you can wait six months, one year, to get your money back. So uh, we, uh, we, ex we hope to uh, to get on to once we get this one going, we hope that we can go on to, to open other clinics as well. I should just mention, mention before I leave that the CMF Health Services was also given the mandate, the trust was given the mandate for training and providing opportunities uh, for our members for further education and also for training. And we have been, we have been involved in, in, uh, in organizing several uh, conferences last year, an important one was the Road Development Conference or seminar which we organized to, uh, together with Gertrude's Garden Children's Hospital. At the present time in October we'll have a conference which we are organizing, an oncology conference which is being organized together with Kesho, Kenya uh, uh, Hematology and Oncology Association or something like that. And uh, we have also managed to organize for some of our doctors to 
uh, get fellowships to a university in Korea, Dr. Juka, went last year to Korea for three months, and that was a fully paid fellowship and attachment in, in general surgery. Uh, this year, we have two doctors that have already received that fellowship. Uh, Dr. Kizito, I think, should be traveling in September for a three-month fellowship in the university. Uh, it's called Yosei University Health Systems. And Dr. Who is the second doctor? Okay, the doctor from Kijabe, what's his name? What's your colleague's name? Martin Buku. Uh, for him, he'll be leaving in April next year because he was engaged this year, but he requested that his fellowship be put forward to next year and they accepted. So he'll be going to Korea for three months in April next year. We are also able to get through our relationship with that particular university. Two Kenyan children were, were benefited.